Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at positive externalities of consumption. We have previously looked at production, so now we'll look at, at the uh, consumption side. And I'm going to use the same example. We saw that the provision, uh, the supply of education, and how it has a spillover benefit to the rest of society or the macroeconomy, we can also see that from the consumption side. As students consume education, they improve their, their skill sets. Um, they can command higher wages. They are more productive in the workforce, and that spills over and benefits their nation as a whole, their macro economy. And we used um, this example to highlight how increasing number of mean years of schooling is correlated with an increase in the G GDP per capita income of a particular nation. And so we can see that when we start getting to countries like uh, South Africa, Chile, uh, France, New Zealand, the mean years of schooling is rising to 12 years, and we see the per capita income beginning to approach $50,000 per year. So let's go ahead and illustrate positive externalities of consumption. Again, using the example of education. Other positive externalities of consumption could be exercising, taking care of your health, um, watching what you eat, not consuming, uh, consuming um, vegetables and other healthy foods and so on. Um, those can be considered also other examples of positive consumption exercise, eating right, um, getting regular checkups, getting vaccinated. Uh, these are all positive consumption externalities. So we start off in the free market. We notice that in the free market, we're looking at the provision of education. In this case, it's private schools. S1 equal MPC, which are the private schools, and then we have a downward sloping demand for education equal to the marginal private benefit, the household consuming private education. And that provides a free market equilibrium price at PM and a free market equilibrium quantity at QM where quantity supply equals quantity demanded. But society sees that when people consume education, it increases their skill sets, they become, they improve their critical thinking skills, they make better informed decisions and so on. And society would like more consumers to consume more education. So we can highlight that with a, an additional demand curve, which we'll illustrate here. It will be, let's say, oh, let me use a different color. Uh, let's say we have our additional demand curve here at D2 which is equal to the marginal social benefit. Society would like this level of consumption of education. And we're gonna assume that on the production side, there is no externality. We'll assume that the marginal private cost is equal to the marginal social cost. We just lack enough demand for education. So in the free market, you can also state, right, that at free market quantity of QM, we notice that the marginal social benefit of education, of the consumption of education, is greater than the marginal social cost. Thus, there is an under allocation. Society would like more. More resources uh, provided to the production and consumption of education. So we can notice that at QM, we go up, and here we have point B. Point B being the marginal social benefit of education is greater than the marginal social cost at point A. Okay, again, marginal social benefit at QM greater than marginal social cost. Society would like more. So social optimum would be achieved where the marginal social cost equals the marginal social benefit at this point, point C. That would provide the optimal price and the optimal quantity. Price optimum and quantity optimum achieved at point C. 
We can also illustrate the welfare loss, right, which is the triangular area that we see here. And we notice that this triangle is pointed outward. Right? We want more. And that's the illustration. So I'm going to go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we have graph A illustrating the market for education as an example of a positive externality of consumption. The consumption of education by households improves their skill set, makes them a higher skilled uh, unit of labor, makes them more productive in the workforce, and it contributes to the overall micro and macro economy. We have a upward sloping supply of education equal to S1, which is equal to the marginal private costs of private education, also equal to the marginal social costs of education. And we have two downward sloping demand curves in accordance to the law of demand, D1 equal to the marginal private benefit. And in the free market, we notice that where MPC equals MPB provides a free market price at PM and a free market quantity at QM, but we notice that at quantity in the free market of QM, the marginal social benefit of the consumption of education is greater than the marginal social cost, signaling that there's an underallocation of resources to the production and consumption of education, and society would like more. Social optimum would thus be achieved where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit, which would provide a price that's optimal at P-opt and the optimal social quantity at Q-opt. Thus at Q-opt, allocative efficiency is achieved. Marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. So the next video will look at how do we solve this? How do we achieve um, the allocatively efficient level of output that is desired by society? And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.